Do we need all these add-ons? Organ Blender already do a lot of it. Let's find out. All right, let's go to Blender Market and add-ons. Sort by newest first, and our first victim is Origin Adjustment Control. Let's see, retrieve all selected objects of types, transform object. Okay, okay, here's, here's what this thing does. First off, it lets you select everything by type. You can also do that by going up to this button. Hold on. Here we go. 1.5. Now you can see what I'm doing. This one here. And here we can hide every mesh, for instance, or we can disable selection for everything but mesh. And now if we press A, we'll select only the meshes. And the add-on lets you move the origin point uh, by itself, which you can also do by going to options here and effect only origins. It also brags about giving you a gizmo for it, so let's activate the move gizmo, clicking shift tab to enable snapping, and do face project, and now you can snap it to anywhere on the surface of the monkey as well. Now this is kind of fun, like a meta ball brush. I mean, you can kind of replicate this in Blender as well. Curve object, uh, go to geometry nodes, new, and do curve to points, and then instance on those points, instance on points and icosphere, and then we have to realize those instances so that we can. Easiest way to do this is with the modifiers. Let's do a remesh modifier, a voxel, and that's I think that's gonna be pretty much it. If we now press tab and go to the um, the draw, and we can draw, it's gonna kind of meta ball. I mean, if you wanted to meta ball even more, you can increase the voxel size, and then after that maybe add a um, control two, a smooth. So now you have a tool to draw meta balls. What else do we have? Material Master Pro. Okay, so one thing it does is it removes unused materials from the scene, which you can actually do by going to File, Clean Up, Purge Unused Data. Another thing is Batch Replace Materials, and that is actually, that is a super useful feature, but uh, it is a feature that is already in Blender. Maybe I want all of these to have the same material. I made the black material three times, but I only need one. What do you do? You go here to Blender File, the scary one. And here we have a materials drop down. Right click them, remap users to one of them. Now, these two have no users. It says zero and zero, meaning that if we go uh, clean up, purge, unused data, those will be gone and everything shares the same black material. This add-on is actually pretty cool. It's for making sculpting bases because it's much easier to make like a stick man than to make a full sculpt. I don't know if you can completely replace this, but you can do something fairly similar to this. So let's add a uh, skin. And with the, with the skin, you can kind of, let's uh, merge these at the center, merge these at center. You can kind of work with just a line. So right now I have just the line. And if I say extrude upward, I just pressed E, which extrudes this. So if I do that and control A, now I can increase the size of that. Obviously, we want a mirror on this. And maybe we even want to smooth it out a little bit. Control 4, I like that. Goes out. Control A to shrink it down. Control A down. And then definitely what you would have to do is right click, convert to mesh, and then go into sculpt mode and R to select voxel size, control R to remesh. And now you can start sculpting on this thing. This one, yeah, let's do this one. Render for catalog. The point is to make a bunch of variations of one product in a studio scene. This is a good use case for an add-on actually, but it is possible to get pretty close. What you need to do is you need to make a collection for each one and we'll put them into their own collections. Then we need to enable and disable these based on a view layer. So we'll make one view layer. Uh, these are up here. Uh, this one's just called white. And I'll turn off red and blue in this one. And let's copy these settings over to another view layer, which we will call uh, blue. Or we will turn on the blue one and turn off the white one. Copy its settings to one called red and turn on red and off blue. So if we use nodes in the compositor, and here you have access to all those view layers. So here we have white, and we have blue, and we have red, and we can hook all those up to their own file outputs. Plug these in, and now when I hit render, it'll render all three and save all three images. Wait, does this... I feel like this just is in Blender. 
I mean, because in Blender you have, if you have a bunch of objects, you select them all here, and uh, you probably know F2 renames something, but Control F2, that brings up a batch rename, and you can do selected objects, you can do find replace, cube, and we'll replace that by square, which I prefer, then it will replace every cube with, with square but maintain the numbers. Uh, we can also strip out characters. You can do it with collections, materials, like it's it's crazy good. Have, finding good gobos is is not very easy, so this is actually like, you just, it's, it's a library of great gobos. You can make it yourself. I'll show you how to make it yourself, actually. Let's go to something like Pixabay. Yeah, this one's probably gonna be good. Uh, tree Silhouette. We can download this for free as a PNG, download it. Uh, one thing that's important for a gobo light to work is we need to go into its light settings and turn down the spread. Then we use nodes on that so that we can make our own node graph for the light. And the shader editor will just bring in that downloaded tree image. Like it, it had an alpha background, right? So let's do strength and render it out. And that already works, but it's inverted. So let's INV invert this color. What I don't like about the invert is the factor is at the top and color at the bottom. So by default, it goes into the factor. Like it should be, I feel like it should be the opposite. And if we want to scale it up, we can do that and turn up the, the brightness so that we get this. And just to make it a little more realistic, let's turn up the spread a little, like so it gets a little, a little blurry. Seriously, shortcut searcher, insert keyframe. This is it. Shading mod. Key is telling you how you can replace this yourself inside Blender, and it just gives you a tool set for doing it quickly. I can respect that, but let's let's follow his guide. I went up to this button here and turned on a matte cap, uh, the same matte cap he used. Matte caps are great for finding like shading errors, and this one, this one's intense, so you can really see where it goes wrong. So first thing his add-on does is ngon to tries. Let's do that. We go into tab and we do select, select all by trait and faces by sides. And what we want is anything that has greater than four sides. That's the definition of an ngon. And then we can press control F and do triangulate faces. Apparently it's control T as well. Let's check that. Control T. There we go. It's triangulated. And that's the, that's the first part. Then it does reset shading. And I'm guessing that's probably clear custom split normal data. Uh, yes. Custom split normals data, and you can clear the custom split normal data if you have any. Then it adds a weighted normals modifier, which is a great modifier for shading issues. I don't think it's going to help in this case, but the last one will work. That's, that's a transfer data. Uh, because if we add a, another UV sphere, you would just keep your original object before you start doing any boole booleans on it. But what you do is, this one is the smooth model. And this other one, this is the eft model. And we go to the eft model and we add a transfer, a data transfer. And the source is the smooth model, which we can then hide in the viewport. We don't need it anymore. And what we want is a face, we want face corner data because normals are face corner data. And we want custom normals to be transferred. And I think probably the, the version of this we want is projected face. Yes, because then it's projecting out to the side and it's looking at the smooth model and checking what's the normal here? <laughs> Laser animated version 3. What does this do? Does this do anything I can't do in like two minutes? I'll add a plane tab, merge everything at center and then extrude that point out. This is our laser so we can use this to like control where it goes. And in geometry nodes, I love geometry nodes. We will do a mesh to curve and then a curve to mesh. Because then we get the profile curve, which will be a curve circle. The curve circle goes in here. Its radius must down to a more fitting laser width. Set material and give it a new material, which is an emissive. Did you know you can just click this button and then E for emission? Let's make it red. And that's our material. Go into rendered view. Let's do EV. And it has bloom, doesn't it? So compositor, use nodes. And here we'll, we'll add a glare node. 
set to bloom and it needs to be on in the viewport compositor so always on and the material needs to be strong there we go that's a damn good laser okay let's expand this a bit more and let's do the animation for it so before the curve turns into a mesh we want to trim it using a trim curve and that that just that changes the start and end points we want it set to length so that we can do a Let's see, let's just expose the start. Now in the modifier, we can we can change the start value of this. And the end will just be the start plus whatever length we set. So the length can also be exposed, actually. And here I'll just rename that. So, so the start is animate and the other one is length. So here we can set the length of the laser bolt and then animate it using using this. Now the animate is clamped at zero. Let's let's stop that. Like uh, clamp it at negative hundred. That should be sufficient. Pew, pew. Nice. <laughs> I hope this add-on does something more than the built-in feature. Okay, listen. I may be uncharitable here, but but there is a measure distance tool and it's right here in the toolbar. Press T and you have measure. And if you press the measure button. You can hold down control to snap it to vertices and then measure any length of vertex that you want. Not only that, this is pretty cool. If you want to uh, measure an angle, then you can click in the middle of a measurement and drag it over there and it will get an angle as well. And of course you can change the unit as well uh, under scene and units if you want imperial because you're some sort of... I actually really like the idea of this add-on, not least because it's free. But just to get you the chance to learn how to do something similar inside Blender, I'll show you. The trick is to go here to the options and then affect only uh, locations. And then you can do things like if you scale it down to zero on X, you won't actually scale the object, you will only affect the location. You can do this with rotating as well, which is which is pretty handy. And if you do it from the point of view of the 3D cursor, so shift S, cursor to selected, and then scale to the cursor and scale X zero and then everything's moved to that. What does this do that the built-in function in Blender doesn't do? I apologize if your add-on is great and I'm just not realizing. The point of this video isn't to be fair, it is to teach the people things they might not know. I think it's under the output tab and yes, stereoscopy. The stereoscopy is, it's really made for 3D movies. Like if we view through the camera, this kind of like 3D glasses rendering, but uh, it also has a function for multi-view. And the way to use it is to add more cameras here and write the suffix of the camera here. So in my case, the suffixes are just numbered. The first camera suffix will be 000, second camera suffix will be 001. I'm not gonna do all of them, but if you now save the render, it'll look kind of weird while it's rendering. But if you go to the folder where it's saved, then you do in fact get all of the angles. This one is a good opportunity to talk about add-ons that you can actually remake yourself. It's about selecting objects with a minimum vertex count. So basically selecting high poly objects. And if you go to ChatGPT, it can write a script for you that does that very easily. Okay, so let's open a new window, go to the text editor, Press new and copy the script from ChatGPT, put it right in here. And it's given us a threshold value here, minimum vertex threshold, and it's set to 100 by default. Let's just play the script. And yes, it does select everything that has more than 100 vertices. This is great for automating some tiny tasks that you do all the time and especially like selecting stuff. This is, this is gold. I want you to subscribe to my newsletter because when I learn something that doesn't really fit into a video, that's where I put it. And in aggregate, I feel like it's probably the most valuable thing I make. So there's a link to the Substack below. It is free to join, it always will be, and it'll keep being for your benefit. I hope you enjoy it.